All right, welcome back to the Run.Jam post-game show here on the Strickland YouTube channel. If you listen to this, to this the day after the Strickland Podcast Network, I'm Sam. I'm joined by Schwinn. Knicks lose 113-112, to 112, bringing their record to 44-30. and 30. Um, Of course, before we get into all that, um, the tournament is here. Bet Online is your tournament headquarters for this season with the best bracket contest out there and odds, lines, and info on every game and every round right up to the national championship. You can access most of most to the up. Most up to the minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices, and even track your bracket real time all the way through the tournament. We're heading to the final four now, so head to the Bet Online app today, get on all the action. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online game starts here. All right, um, let's get started. There's a lot of there's a lot of controversy about this, this, this Knicks, um, loss. Um, I mean. I mean, we can start, I guess, right with the refs. <clears throat> um, the, ref, the whistle that J- Jalen Brunson's been getting has just been absolutely abysmal. Um, I mean, you saw it all throughout this game. Um, OKC was allowed to guard him however they wanted to. Um, and even on that last play where he drives into the to, to get that basket, um, he obviously gets fouled there. Um, and even after the game, he talks to the refs. I feel like he should have been a little bit more demonstrative. I think he was a little too calm for the way that this game ended up. Um, things, And we'll talk about all the other factors that factored into this loss. But I do really think um, the referees do did play a big part in this game. And not even just the Jalen Brunson stuff, but the, just like a lot of the other calls, like the flagrant foul. I should I thought that that should have been a flagrant too on 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 Williams on um, Hartenstein. Like there was just a bunch of calls that were just. So questionable. Even the call where Josh Hart got fouled on the drive and OKC's coach challenged it and he somehow got that even though the guy hit Josh Hart. Like, just a bunch of questionable calls tonight that, you know, you can say the Knicks shouldn't have blown a 10-point lead. You know, the bench should have played better. Um, other players should have played better. But I do think that the, like, calls, certain calls just really fucked with this team. Um, Schwinn. Um, uh, I just want to say, first of all, before I talk anything negative, um, I think, um, whatever any individual player criticisms we have, um, Brunson, Hart, even Chenzo, Dutes, Hartstein, Precious, these six guys, um, Dave, I mean, they've given us everything that you could possibly ask for for the last two months. So I don't really have an interest in any criticisms of them. Like, sure. In the moment, uh, am I going to like lose my mind when Josh Hart doesn't take an open three and pump fakes and drives into like a contested lane? And sure, yeah, all those things happen. Do I get pissed when like Dis McBride is on the floor or running? running point uh when when brunson's on the bench like and and the offense goes to complete shit and we can't function like yeah of course get mad about that stuff but at least they're on the court I, they're on the floor and i i can't i can't criticize them because they're giving you everything they've got any anything that you see that is a problem that is a limitation that is a deficiency in the team i mean yeah they are but like that's what they're giving you what they have. That's all they can do. You know, um, you know, Brooks and McDonough, they've obviously not been good since uh, arriving in New York. I actually kind of felt today that like, I don't know. I, I don't even know how to put this. Cause I, I don't, I, this is not like a criticism because it, uh, the evidence supports uh, what Tibbs decided to do. But like, I thought maybe you could give, Bogdanovich a couple more minutes in the in the, in the second half. Again, I, I don't think it's a big problem that he did it. It's just like I think maybe I, I thought like he was playing okay today. Um, not particularly good or great. I just thought he was fine and would have been nice to give, you know, uh I think Deuce, Hart, and Dante all played the entire second half, right? Um, so like it would have been okay. It would have been nice to just give at least one of them or a couple of them a few minutes off. Um, but all that being said, like yeah, look, the officiating, um, I don't know. I, I know that people will probably look at, like, the fucking free throw totals. I don't even know what the fuck they were. 
Um, they're probably okay. They're probably pretty even. But like, I just really don't understand the Brunson stuff at all. Like, I I'm totally good with the NBA deciding, hey, let's not reward Harden level style free throw baiting. Let's not let's not reward bullshit. I, I'm fine with that. And there honestly, there are some calls that Brunson wants that I don't necessarily care about him getting. I don't even I don't even really think about it too much like you know some of the stuff where he's obviously hunting out contact feels it and then tries to take like a leaner the other way like i don't care about that stuff that's that's what it is um and if they don't call that they don't call that it's on him to adjust but there was like there was literally multiple plays in the fourth quarter where he got hit in the face and didn't get a call and and then i mean that last call like i I, that last layup he makes i'm sorry like I, i just don't i don't get how that's like that's a fucking foul in any era of the NBA, no matter how it's been officiated. Like, that's a foul. That is a foul. You have to call that. And if you're not going to call that, then, like, I don't even know what the fuck the point of having a ref is. Um, you know, did the Knicks, obviously the Knicks, I think they went, what, 10 of 16 from the free throw line in the fourth quarter or something like that? Um, I would suggest that two of those free throws being missed maybe don't matter because they got the rebound and then Brunson had a three to tie the game, like, on one of those. So whatever, but, like, yeah, look, the Knicks obviously did fuck up things that were under their control as well. So it, it's not like, oh, like, they only lost this game because of the refs. But, look, like, you – can't expect players or teams to be perfect and you can't expect refs to be perfect but you have to expect we expect josh hart when he gets a layup to make a layup right we expect that if deuce mcbride gets open corner threes he makes 40 percent of them like you have certain expectations of, of of players and coaches right with of tips um i don't think it's insane to feel like hey I think it's okay if we expect the refs to make obvious calls. Like, I still can't. There was literally one call. I don't even remember what the hell happened. I think Brunson drove. He might have missed it. I think maybe somebody got a a putback. I don't remember exactly what happened. But, like, he literally got, like, grabbed around. Like, it, it looked like he got grabbed around the shoulder. It was, like, a very obvious foul. And he just didn't call it. And, like, if you're not going to call that and you're not going to call that one at the end of the game, like I, I just, I don't really understand what you're like. It's, e- it's very easy to just keep saying, Oh, play through the whistle, play through the whistle, adjust. Like, and I've said that shit before. And I, and I do feel like that sometimes that like sometimes Brunson has gotten too focused on foul baiting and debating the refs on, on what is and isn't a foul. And I just, I I don't know what to say when I watch a game like tonight where it's like I'm gonna be honest. Like aside from the not like the Brunson officiating, I thought this was like a pretty okay officiated game. I thought it was fine, honestly. I thought they were good. Aside from that, but like that guy has the ball all the time, and if you're not gonna call that stuff, then I just I, again like I I don't know what to really say, and I. And I really don't like to just talk about the officiating because I mean it's like the least interesting part of NBA basketball or any basketball. Um, but like, you can't you can't not talk about that if you're talking about this game because at the end of the game, I mean that that call like at bare minimum, right? We should be in well, overtime right now. Well, like, well, think about this way: like at bare minimum, if even if you want to say, well, he look, he shot like you know he shot like shit from the line this game, so. So who cares? Like, uh, you know, how can you guarantee would have made the free throws or whatever? Okay. That's a fair point. But we also rebounded really well, and we got offensive rebounds. So, like, who's to say that if he doesn't, yeah, maybe he misses. Maybe Hartenstein gets another offensive rebound like he did the the time before he missed when he he missed free throw. And, And not just that, like, if you get the, like, we saw this at the end of that fucking Detroit game, right? The Knicks won that game. Yes, they got uh, a very, very favorable call. But Hart missed a, the free throw. That would have effect, effectively like boiled the game away. And, and and even before that, they had missed a free I, I forgot exactly. They missed a free throw, right? That's what like led to that entire chaotic sequence. Like The Knicks are a really good offensive rebounding team. They, 
if they what what's to say that they wouldn't get an offensive rebound there or at least tip it up keep it alive now the clock's running right there was like 3.8 or 4.8 seconds left where the fuck it was at that time so like i, I don't know i i just i i i'm excited i'm sure that we will see the two minute report tomorrow i'm sure that will be or not even that they might even just say it tonight after the game like they've been doing a whole bunch of times like they said it after the kelly Oubre call just a couple nights ago they were like oops i'm our, our bad like they just do it right after the game now Houston, right yeah, and they did it right after the Houston game too. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, aside from that, I mean, yeah, like you said, shout out to the guys that have been actually producing on the core. I've seen a, a bunch of comments in our chat already about some other players who have been missing several games, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll address all that. But um, you know, shout out to the guys that are actually on the court. Um, and, you know, they're just producing for us, you know, no matter what. I mean, like you said, you can get mad at guys like Josh Hart and, like, all these guys for their, their fuck-ups and stuff like that. I, I would just like, suggest that we, like, yeah, we, you can get ima- mad in the moment, but, like, you know, after Long-term game, and after yeah, you just realize. Game, I'm sorry. I, anybody that's, like, mad at Josh Hart, like, please get a like, dude. Like, or, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just trying to sing, like, it could be anybody. Like, oh, like, like, did Josh Hart make some dumb plays? Sure. Did Brunson make some stupid plays? Yeah, did. Everybody is going to make stupid plays if you play the minutes these guys are playing. You know, DiVincenzo. Every time this guy misses a shot, it's like, it's like, oh, is he being overplayed? I mean, yeah, he is being overplayed. Yes, he is. They're, like, we, he absolutely is. But that's because, like, that's what is almost required right now because we are just that shorthanded and because Burks and Bogdanovich have just not given us anything. I mean, Burks, again, like, I'm sorry. Like, I, I, Bogdanovich has not been good. I still will maintain that I at least watch him, and I'm like, eh, it looks like a guy that's like trying to like play within some type of scheme. Burks today, I mean, does he know he can pass the ball? Is he aware that like when you dribble and you drive in, that you're actually still allowed to pass the ball? Because he hasn't done it. I don't remember the last time I fucking saw him dribble and then pass the ball. It's, I can't watch. It's unbelievable, honestly. Like, put shake in the game. I, I don't I don't care. Like I am so sick of it. I, I, I can't believe what I'm watching. It's like, dude, you're in a, I, I get it, you're in a contract here. Maybe you want to play well instead of playing a fucking asshole. Try that. Um but yeah, like dude, those again, those six guys, like, look, Precious put like shit against San Antonio. I don't really feel like I need to criticize him for it. Cause ideally, like, we wouldn't be hinging our like entire ability to win and lose games on non Brunson minutes where precious happens to be on the floor. Uh, but that's where we are. That's where we are right now is that these last two games, um, the Knicks have lost because they can't function as a team when Brunson's off the floor and uh, they're not being helped by the fact that a lot of margins are going against them in terms of NBA officiating. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, let's just go through the box score. Um, you know, shout out to some guys that played well tonight. Um, and, you know, we'll get into the comments as well. Um, all right, let me pull up this box score real quick. So we had Jalen Brunson, of course, leading the way. Um, almost gave us another classic Easter moment, um, you know. Um, gave us 30 points on, on 11 for 25 from the field, seven assists. Um, just doing all that he can. S- still, he-, he only played 34 minutes tonight. Um, do we think this was like a concerted effort for the Knicks trying to just like still trying to preserve his minutes? Um, because this did see it was much more different than the San Antonio game where like they really were going all out with his minutes. Um, but yeah, what do you think, Schwinn, about like his minutes tonight? I mean, he only played 35. Or do we think it's just because because I remember there was an extended stretch to start the fourth quarter, and a lot of people wonder. I, 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 I think was. I think I think he's just got some type of minutes cap that we're not aware of. I think it looks like looking at his game log, it's something around like thirty three to thirty five. I know that he obviously pushed past that against the Spurs, which was overtime game. game. It's overtime game, so it's a little bit different. Um, but that's what it seems to be like thirty three, thirty five, thirty six, something around in that range seems to be like where he's he's capped at, um, and. You know, if you want to be critical of like how those minutes are distributed, however many they are, okay, go for it. I, I just look, I gotta say this as somebody who's been really, really critical of Tom Thibodeau in the past, like 
you can we can all sit around and pretend like, well, if you had done this and you had done that, and if this rotation, like, he's got Brunson Shouldn't clearly, he's got Brunson on clearly some type of minutes limit. He's got Isaiah Hartenstein, who we know for sure is on a minutes limit. Mitchell Robinson didn't play tonight because uh, he sprained his ankle or whatever the hell he tweaked his ankle in the last game. That's Fair. after Mitchell Robinson had missed obviously the previous, uh, whatever it was like from mid December, however many months that is three and a half months. Um, like when you're working at, and I was OG is out, Randall is out. Like when you're dealing with that much shit, I just think you got to be a little bit more like understanding of, there are going to be some shitty minutes and I don't know. I, I don't, I just have a really hard time criticizing Tibbs, criticizing Tibbs, sorry, um, for anything that happened in the last couple of games, just cause like, I, I don't know. I, I don't really know what is a reasonable expectation when you've had so many different circumstances present themselves to you. So, yeah, um, Dante DiVincenzo tonight, man, four for 18, four for 16 from the field. I mean, it happens. It happens, yeah. But it's, man, the nature he, of, it's the nature of volume three-point shooting, right? You go 11 yes. of 20 against the, against the Pistons, you're going to go four of 15 against the fucking Thunder. Four of 16, right? He missed that. I mean, God, that fucking... That last weekend, one. That was that in. Was it was like... It was in, bro. It was in. It was, it was brutal. Yeah. He he missed a bunch of brutal ones. Um, there were some bunnies that I feel like some guys missed too. But I mean, that's just the nature of what it is, how what we're dealing with. Um, but yeah, let's let's just jump into some comments. Um, let's see. Um, Chris Bernhard starts us off. This BS of letting them play is just an excuse for lack of accountability on refs. This is the same thing they've been doing, using the whistles whenever they want. Rules not meaning anything. I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty fair to say. Um, you know, it, it's, it's see, this is so. This is my thing. Is like letting them play is fine. Letting them play is good. I'm all for letting motherfuckers play. But there are certain things that are just fouls, and you have to call things that are obvious fouls. Like, you can't just be like, oh, well, I'm letting them play. And it's like, you know, a guy's got a fucking sledgehammer to Jalen Brunson's head. Like, that's not how that works. Yeah. You have to call obvious fouls. If you're not calling obvious fouls, then you're you're failing. And I'm sorry. Like, I... And I'll say this, too. Like, I really believe this. The only thing the Knicks have really done publicly, right? Tibbs has been very, very good about, like, even when he's been critical of the officiating, he really does not go after them. He has not publicly lost his shit or anything, right? Not not in press conferences. You know, on the sideline, that's its own mm -hmm. fucking thing. Um, the only thing they did was they filed that complaint after, after the Rockets came. Brunson... Himself, I, I if somebody has quotes that they can point me to, um, but to my knowledge, he's not really said anything publicly, and nobody has. Um, like, I, I don't know. I don't know what the Knicks could really do to maybe get a better whistle beyond what they've done because I think they've actually handled themselves really well. Um, in a lot of cases, and it's just really, really frustrating. Yeah. Um. All right. Yeah. Let's let's get to the next comment. We got um. Um. Ace Bouchard's. Yeah. Um. I think he's responding to Jordan Bub in the comments here, but um, Jordan Bub said it would still be tied if the call if they called the obvious and one ace Bouchard says it had no be business being that close. Um, but even fully healthy, I still think this team would not be great in the non Brunson minutes. Yeah. That's the thing that's really hurting this team a ton. And unfortunately this team is just shorthanded at the moment. Um, and you know, that's just the hand that we're dealt at this, this moment in time. Like Burks has not been good. Boyan's been sort of up and down, but mostly down for the most part. Um, and yeah, it, it, for the most part, you're getting production out of like six guys, maybe on a given night. 
and it's just it's just rough to bounce it's just rough to like get wins like that especially like in these tough competitive games against good teams like OKC <clears throat> yeah um Connor McCollum says got smoked by and that corny loser and rushed back from injury so he could get his MSG Instagram captures off. Shout out to Breen, by the way, who Breen had a disaster class, I want to say, in announcing today. Um, between the Josh Giddy stuff and the, the referee stuff, it was just just a disaster class. <clears throat> um Yeah. Blue Lives Breen, as I like to call him. I, I the Breen thing, it's whatever. Um I could have done a little I could have done with a little bit less. Um I don't know how many times he could have said that Jalen Williams is a star. Like <laughs> he's not getting enough credit, is he? Are you sure that Jalen Williams isn't getting I feel like he's getting a lot of credit, credit. tonight? <laughs> well, I just I just feel like I, I I've seen people that were oh, he's a top twenty player in the league. So no, it seems like he's getting a lot of credit to me. But I don't want to the brain thing that I, I look, credit to Breen. He he was he was critical of the rest of the night. As as much as you can expect him to be. Yeah. I mean for him, that's that's something. Yeah. Um Um, crazy enough, we can still recover from the two losses. We're still went away from third again. Huge game versus Miami on Tuesday. We play Miami on Tuesday. Oh, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> oh man! All right. Just Zach Composto says, "Been patient with OG, but this dude needs to get off his ass." I I, I tweeted out today. I was like, I have already tampered my expect. I've already tempered my expectations for this team because I'm fully expecting to go into the postseason shorthanded. Um, just like everything that we've heard. The, the lack of updates is updates enough for me to just kind of accept the team's fate for what it is at this point. But, yeah. Um, OJ and Anobi is a free agent this summer. The Knicks clearly are going to pay him to stay as part of their team. And it makes sense why they would do so, considering the month that he was healthy, they looked like they were about to nuke the entire NBA. All that is true. All that is factual. All that is justifiable. It makes sense, logical, blah, blah, blah. I am just going to fucking say this, because no, no, like, there's really no other way to say it. Um, I understand, obviously, he got elbow surgery because he felt something was really fucked up. He said it got to a point where he... He just had to do it. Okay. Fine. I get that. I think from every report I've seen from the initial kind of like timeline that was given, the Knicks did not seem to rush him back. He came back at a time that was in line with a normal recovery from the surgery he had. Um, they even played him for a week in practice, basically, without even making him active on game day or even suggesting he might be active on game day. Um, he came back, obviously looked great against Philly, um, looked pretty good against Portland before he fucked his, or whatever happened. Like, I don't understand this stuff. Like, I'm not a fucking doctor. And so this is like, I don't know how to verb, like what the specific verbiage or the right verbiage is. Um, but whatever he did, he did something to his elbow against Portland. He played the next game against the Kings didn't shoot well or at all uh, the next win whatever also i think i think he might have led them in plus minus that game again somehow because that's like his thing um hasn't played since then and i'm sure that whatever is happening with his elbow is like i i'm positive i i believe there's no reason for me to not believe that like it feels weird and, and he doesn't feel comfortable playing with it. And I get all that. I am watching Josh Hart, and Dante DiVincenzo and Deuce McBride 
fucking play entire halves. I'm watching Jalen Brunson shrug off like two or three pretty obvious knocks he takes every game, it seems like. Come back and play. I'm seeing Isaiah Hartenstein play through a sore Achilles, which he's literally played through that. He has played through that while in a minute's limit. And he's a fucking seven foot big man who, who, like OG Ananobi, is a free agent summer. And unlike OG Ananobi, has never gotten a real significant NBA type payday. Okay? So I'm seeing all this. I am seeing Julius Randle work out before games. And I'm seeing Julius Randle sit on the bench today at MSG as he's been on the bench at basically every game for like the last, what, like a month or something? Um, I'm seeing all that. And then I look at the bench. I don't see OG and Obi. It's a home game. Presumably, a guy with that they have said is day-to-day could show up and be on the bench for a home game against the Thunder and sit on the bench and be a good teammate and maybe shoot around before the game. I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe and I want to be very clear about this, I'm not suggesting that he has to shoot around before the game. Maybe part of it recovering from whatever is going on with his elbow requires him to not shoot. I don't know. If you can't play, fine. If, if you can't do all these things, fine. Can you just show up and be a good teammate when you're supposedly day-to-day? Is that possible? They're asking for a lot. Um, you know, Mitchell Robinson, while he was dealing with his foot injury, I think I saw him on the bench multiple times. He was there for multiple games. I know this is like a really stupid and small thing that could be harped on, but to me, it's a bad look. I think it's a bad look, and I don't, I really don't feel comfortable saying he's soft or he's a coward or whatever. He's, he's prioritizing, he's being selfish. I don't know what the hell is going on back there with his injury or anything, but I feel like it's okay for me as a fan to just want that guy to be on the, at least be on the fucking bench, dude. Just be there for your teammates. Be a good teammate. Um, I don't know. I don't know why this this really bothered me, but it really did bother me tonight. It it really bothered me tonight. That well, I think it's because me. it's not the it's not the first time that he's you know. But it, no, it's because the, they dude these guys again. They, they, whatever they fucking lose the game. Fine, live with that. You get you're playing OKC, who's going for the top. I mean, it's, not the, it's not the first time that OG's done this, but, per se. Yeah, it's, but it's, it's like, all right, you're, you're playing the top seed, a, a, a team that's going for the top seed in the West, who is healthy, right? I don't think they had any injuries today. I'm pretty sure this is, like, their fucking team. And I don't know. It just, something about it just really bothered me tonight. It, it just really, really annoyed me. It's just like, dude, like, I'm watching... Everybody on this fucking team sacrifice and play through stuff. And even if they can't be on the floor, I know they're dying to be on the floor. Like, I, and maybe part of this is like, we don't know OG that well, right? Cause he's like, he just got to New York and end of December, right? At the start of January. So we're like, yeah, we know him because he's been in the NBA, but we don't like, you know, when a guy's on your team, you know him in a totally different way. So maybe some of this is just like, I'm projecting based on my lack of knowledge of OG and Obi. Um, but again, I, I can't lie. Like it, it's, it annoys me. It does annoy me. It, it annoyed me tonight that he was not on the bench. It didn't annoy me that much. That he didn't play. It annoyed me that he didn't play because he was not on the fucking bench. Like be a good teammate, be there for your team. I, I don't know. I, I, I just, that one, that, that really, really fucking pissed me off. tonight. I'm not going to lie. And I've been super, super like, Trying very, very hard to Patient. not do the, like the the uh, is OG a fucking coward thing? Like, because I don't know, I don't understand sports. Like, I'm not a fucking doctor. I don't have his fucking medical information. You know, I'm not. I'm not in the locker room. I don't fucking know any of that shit. But that thing is something I think it's okay as a fan to have an opinion about. And I thought it was bullshit. He should have been on the fucking bench and just sat there and been a good teammate. Julius Randle was. 
there's no reason that OG and Obi couldn't. What the fuck you would do? What well, is his elbow? It, his elbow is gonna like uh, explode. It it's gonna explode if he sits on the fucking bench. Come on, the guy, so, the guy, the guy could fucking fly to Toronto to go get his fucking dick sucked uh, by the <laughs> Raptors for his six years there. He could, he could, uh, you know, have all that thrive on that adulation, but he couldn't be on the bench tonight. I'm sorry, that's a problem for me, and I just, that's just what it is. Yeah, I mean, I think you are speaking for a large part of the fan base. A lot of the fan base has been very frustrated with the whole OG situation, just how it's been going about. Um, All right, well, I'm just going to read this because it needs to be read. This is from Ian Begley. Josh Hart says he's not part of any medical conversations but believes the Knicks should approach games as if this is a team they'll have, they'll have, and if OG Ananobi and Julius Randle come back, they'll be pleasantly surprised. That's fucking great. Uh, I'm really, really happy about that, and I would love, honestly, if if they're not going to come back, can we just can that just be said to us? Like, because I don't think, like, if the Knicks were to come out tomorrow and we're like, hey, look, uh, we thought, like, these guys had some setbacks in the recovery. They're not going to be back this year. I'd be like, wow, this is great. Now I can just watch the rest of the season and literally not give a fuck. Like, and I don't mean that in the way of, like, I'm not going to care if they win or lose games, but I'll be like, oh, okay. So, like, seeding doesn't actually matter because, like, we're not doing shit anyway. So, like, I can just watch them play basketball and appreciate them for what they're doing and move on with my life. But, look, I, again, he also said he's not part of medical conversations. So, who the fuck? He might just be. I mean, it's Josh Hart. It's Josh Hart. Mine. Josh Hart, he just says shit, though, too. You're like, are you being serious or are you being Josh Hart? Um, I don't know. I, it just, again, like. And I, don't, and I want to be very clear about this. We need to, like, Randall should not be in the same conversation as OG. Yeah. I will never, ever, ever, I, whatever criticisms and questions I have. We've seen know, Randall, we've seen Randall play through some shit. Randall will never not play. If he, he, like, I don't think there's any reason to doubt. I think Begley and both cats have reported, like they mostly have said in articles or tweets or whatever, that like Julius is like basically like dying to come back. Um, I don't, I, I, there's no reason for me to doubt that the guy like ran back to play in the playoffs last year clearly wasn't a hundred percent. Like, yeah. and he's just not missed games in his career. Forget what the name in his career. So that's a very different thing to me than OG. And look, I, I Look, everybody has different pain thresholds that they can deal with. Randall clearly has an extremely high one. That's very, very obvious. OGs might be, I mean, not might be, it, it just isn't. It is not. It's not, <laughs> it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. So it's a totally different person. And, and obviously it's a totally different person. But like, that, that we should not group these guys together. Um, like, I understand why there are questions about a lot of things with OG. I honestly would, if Randall, I'd be, I'd, I'll put it, I'd be really, really shocked if Randall doesn't at least try to get back on the floor at some point this season. I'd be really shocked. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> goes back to my tweet about earlier, too. I mean, this whole Begley tweet just reminds me of what I tweeted earlier about tempering expectations, just like, I myself have done that just so I am just like not constantly just waiting on updates and updates and updates. Just like, you know what? Like I'm just approaching every game now. Like, okay, this is what we're going to go into the playoffs with. It's going to be very ugly, but this is what we got. Like, you know, so someone's going to have to step up or, you know, it's going to be a lot of the Jalen Brunson show. I mean, it was already going to be a lot of that, but given where the team stands and the way that the conversations on injuries, like I, I just like, I know Julius will do whatever it takes to get back on the court. Um, but the medical team might just be like, Hey, your shoulder's not ready yet. So like, cause we know he'll try to play through whatever, but like if he's not on the court, we know it's like, okay, it's seriously something that he cannot 
playthrough at the moment. Um, Can I give you some uh, a good good update that okay. you probably don't give a shit about, but it's good for me? Is it about your fantasy team? Yeah, I advanced to the finals, guys. Nice. Can you give? I think I. I think you should like. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so. Much. Appreciate it. Your heartfelt uh, congratulatory clap <laughs> for me. <laughs> oh man. Um. Yeah. So, but yeah. I mean. Yeah. This is. This is what this is what the Knicks are going to be in the playoffs, guys. You know, just just accept it. You know, the sooner we can all accept it, the sooner I think we'll all just be be that much more. You know, at ease with things. We'll be at peace. We'll finally make peace with some things. Because I think a lot of people are just like so anxious about like yeah, finally I'll... having this team back to normal. Can I just want to say something. Yes. I don't think I could be more proud of a team than this year's team. Like what these guys have given us with the injuries we've dealt with and everything, that is like everything you could possibly ever want from your favorite team in any fucking sport, in any in anything. Like they're giving you everything they've got. When they lose games, it's not like it's very rarely like even the Spurs game. It's like all right, well they didn't try for a half, and then the second half they they fucking basically were like had the jet pack. Like it, it, you know, it's it ha you can't expect these guys to be robots, but they've basically given us everything they've gotten for two months. I have never been more proud of a Knicks team than this one, other than like '99. And look at me, look at all this gray ass hair I got. So I watch '99, like. If you can't appreciate it for what it is, for what these guys are doing, and look, we obviously we all just we just spent like the fucking first thirty seven minutes crying about refs and OT and OB <laughs> mysteries and like whatever. But if you can't appreciate what the guys that are active and available, what they're giving us as fans, what they're giving to the organization, to the franchise, to like what what Tibbs is getting from them. That like if you can't appreciate that, then I don't know. May maybe like sports isn't for you, because that that's what it's about, man. It's like a fucking it's a team, obviously a team game or whatever. But like you guys are playing so hard for each other, and and you just I'm I just I I genuinely am like really really appreciative of that and. You know, we watched so many dog shit Knicks teams for so many years where, like, you know, by this time of the season, you're just like, well, God, I wish they would just lose this game so we could get, like, the fifth Zion Williamson. Yeah, the sixth best odds instead of the seventh best odds or whatever. <laughs> like, like, fucking, you get people crying about Maurice Endor and, like, shit. Like, <laughs> like if this is the, the, the end of the season, effectively, in terms of, like, this is what our team is, and we're not going to get OG or Randall back and whatever. Like, yeah, that sucks because, and it sucks because we saw what the potential was. Yeah, we saw what the potential was. That's why it sucks. That's really why it sucks. That is like fundamentally why all of us are upset at some level and, and emotional, whatever. But like, you know, when you step back and just look at it, this guy's giving everything they've got. And as a fan of watching way too many Knicks teams where that was not the case, having to fucking witness guys, absolute fucking losers, like Brandon Jennings, talk about we're going to bring back 90s Knicks stuff to the garden. <laughs> like, like this team is doing that. Like, dude, OKC had to fucking claw and battle and fucking... Give everything they had to win that game tonight, and Best that is, in the West. Okay. yeah, and and that is with their team basically fully healthy. Knicks are out two start three starters effectively, two and a half. However, you want to Mitch is its own weird thing because Arnstein is really good, whatever. But like, he's a starting you, level player. Yeah, you you can't if you can't appreciate that and just like like this team is worth appreciating, and it's worth like loving as a fan 
because they've overcome so much and they have adjusted so many times to so many different adverse situations. Um, I, I really, I, I just think that needed, I, I just wanted to say that because like, I know that like definitely me, um, I can tend to be like very negative and cynical, but like, I obviously love the Knicks and, um, basketball in general, but like, like you love, like teams like this are why you love the Knicks. Like, this is why you would care about this team and, and franchise now, previously, whatever. Like, these are the teams that make you fall in love with it. Um, and I just, I just wanted to say that. Yeah. Well said. Um, Jordan Bub, always bringing it with the stats. Shout out to Jordan Bub. Over the Knicks' last two games, Jalen Brunson has attempted 45 shots in the paint, yet Brunson was sent to the free throw line only seven times. 14 total free throw attempts. Goes back to what we were saying earlier. Um, <clears throat> let's see. We also got some other comments. Jordan Bubb. Shout out to Jordan Bubb. Tom Thibodeau was asked about the contact against Jalen Brunson on the go-ahead shot in the fourth. He repeated, write what you see five times. Yeah. Um, John Leary he says not to be not trying to be hard on Deuce. He had a hand up on SGA, tough shot. But I thought maybe he was giving up too much space off ball. Could have done item better. Maybe a nitpick and just frustrated. I think he played as best defense as he could. And SGA wasn't really a factor until that shot. To be honest, tonight like it was really Jalen Williams and um, Mr. Giddy that were the the issues tonight. And Mr. Giddy's an issue all the time, but for other reasons, which we won't get into, but yeah. <clears throat> um, Judah Benshar says, yeah, I don't know what the announcer did with Mike Breen today. Second half of the game, like five calls, non-calls on the Knicks. Breen voices disagreement when he finally remembered he's a Knicks announcer. Yeah, as, as Schwinn's pointed out, you know, it, it was as good as you could get from Breen in that type of situation. Yeah, I, I don't know. The Breen thing is... It's I, I don't even want to like belabor this point. I apparently had, I had like a bunch of people that were like, "Oh, you just seem to be the only person upset at Mike Breen." I was like, "I doesn't seem like I'm the only person noticed this." If hey, if that's your guy, that's your guy. I mean, look, I like Mike Breen, but Jesus, some, some of his ref justification is something. His how was your How was your uh, Easter dinner, by the way, Sam? It was good. You guys was good. Go out or? Yeah, I went. I went out with my mom and dad for. Um, we went out to get some some Italian food. Nice. Yeah, it's a nice restaurant. You know, it, it's like weird being in the suburbs of New Jersey because it's not like being in like a city like New York. So like, finding good spots is just like, wow, this spot exists here. I didn't know that. Um. All right, yeah, let's see what else we had to hear. Let's see here. Um, Hawkeye420 says, love Deuce, but bench point guard Deuce has continued to not be it. We traded for death and are still shorthanded. Insane shit, man. Yeah, I mean, the Knicks are just dealing with the cards that they dealt. I mean, this is good for Deuce's development, I think. At the least, I think this is what we can come out of this season. We can be like, you know what? This season was great for Deuce's development, you know? He doesn't. He didn't. He, he didn't do everything that we expected him to do. But you like you know, he still produced better than we could have expected. To be honest, I Deuce, just please work on dribbling and and general ball handling stuff. But yeah, no, this Deuce has been awesome. He, like again, he's getting paid fucking what four million, four million dollars a year or, or some shit for like the next three years. I. Deuce, Deuce could fucking take a shit on the floor for the next <laughs> eight games that are remaining the season, and I would be like, cool, great, successful season. He's been awesome. He's been great. And honestly, I want to say huge three. He had a fucking huge three end of the game. So, and it was, you know, it's really nice to see that because he missed the three at the end of the game against San Antonio. So yes. to, see him, to see him not just forget making the shot, but having the, the fucking confidence to hit the shot, to take the shot, that that's really really important. And honestly, what I really liked, and what I really liked recently from the team in general is like, dude, like they're like actually hunting for him. Like they're like like when he's open, they're like trying to find him. 
Um, that's huge. It's huge. Shows how much of a sniper he's been. Yep. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, Hawkeye 420 also says it looks like we won't get healthy anytime soon. But I'm not sure this unhealthy version of the team can win a playoff round. My extreme take. I don't think that's extreme. Um, but I think it just allows you to appreciate this team, like Sean was pointing out earlier, more for what it is at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, Jordan Bubb, Jalen Brunson, Joyce Patrick Ewing, Carmel Anthony, and Booknard King as the only players in Knicks history at 90 plus points in a two game span. Man. The shit of legends. And he's in better shape than one of those guys. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to had to get my game off there. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. I it just it's tough. This is like a, it's a tough it's a tough one to, to accept when you lose like this back to back. Um this one though, you look. They they played a really really the, the Thunder are a really really good team and not only they're a really good team they also like I I the the pedophile made two threes tonight <laughs> I don't know the last time he probably made two threes in a game who fuck knows he's actually been making a lot of threes because I've just been seeing a lot of people oh yeah you've been seeing huh? not, not betting just nope like, nope I'm not <laughs> betting on 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 P Giddy as some people like to call him. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's why. I am is, not putting my heart. Calling that or are you calling him that? No, nah, I saw someone on the timeline calling P. Giddy today, and I was just like, okay, that's a that's, that's, that's a that's a new good name. <laughs> that's a really good one. <laughs> like I didn't have the creativity to come up with that one. <laughs> that's, but that's... yeah, I mean, when he was when he was on his little run today, that just felt absolutely gross. Um. And I forgot who tweeted it out. They were just like so happy to tweet it. Out. I think it was Fred Katz. It was like, and Josh Giddy has gotten a triple double every time he's come to Madison Square Garden. It's like, okay. like he said he has something like four career triple doubles and three of them are against the Knicks. It's like, dude, this fucking loser just trying so hard versus the Knicks. I mean, it's I guess you, you know what it is. He probably comes to New York, and he's just so close to his godfather's home. Right, Jeffrey Epstein. So, just inspires, <laughs> just inspires him. <laughs> oh man, um, Jordan Bob, the Knicks are just one game ahead of Orlando. The Magic hold the tiebreaker. The Magic play the Blazers tomorrow. The Knicks play the Heat on Tuesday. It's rough. Look I, again, like I just, I've, I've been pretty consistent about this, and I've said this throughout like if this team if they get an automatic playoff berth considering all the stuff they've been dealing with to me that's like pretty much a victory like to be in the position they are with basic without two of your starters and a third guy who again is basically a starter level player for at least the last two months plus now at this point to be in this position, like, uh, I, again, like I said, appreciate this team for what they're giving you because they're giving you everything they got. Um, John 17, um, Brunson lost, kind of lost his clutchness. Mm, I wouldn't say that. I don't know about that. That's strange takeaway. I, I, I won't, I will. Okay. <laughs> it's like, I'm not, it's nothing, I'm not going to really respond to that. Um, shout out to Hartenstein tonight. 17 points, 12 rebounds, 5 assists, 1 steal, plus 7. Held Chet to 5 points on 2 of 8 shooting. And Key Chet piece of my uh, fantasy advancement. <laughs> so, congrats to him. Unfortunately, I also have SGA. Sorry, guys. Yeah, so you were probably enjoying that last shot a little bit. Yeah, I was, I was dude, I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love this. This is amazing. <laughs> oh man. Um, like I was I was actually just like fucking fist bumping. I was I was just like 
going wild. I was like, let's fucking go. <laughs> My guy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, we play the Heat next too, so um I think we need to just wrap Jalen Brunson in, in bubble wrap for this game. Like because Bam will be on the hunt, Jaime will be on the hunt. I've never wanted the Knicks to win a game more than this. <laughs> more, like a, oh yes. Oh my god. What? Oh yes, finally a win. Holy no. shit. Oh, you hit a parlay? Yes, it's Let's so go. disgusting. Yeah, it's been it's been so long since you won seven. It billion has dollars. been. It's been like two weeks, Sam. And you place like plus fucking five thousand dollar parlays. So, oh know. my gosh! Just check out uh, my timeline if you want to see if you're watching. Yeah. Um, like I, if the Knicks win this game, I think that would be like that's like my fucking. Uh, that would be like that's like my fucking Super Bowl. Be like my it's like my nine eleven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's my Super Bowl. <coughs> Losing to the Heat would be like my nine eleven. I'd be like, are you? This It'd be like fifteen nine eleven. This is the end of my life. <laughs> I am done. It'd be like fifteen nine elevens. I'll write a fucking will. I'll leave. Uh, all In the words my, of um, yeah, one, I'll, Joseph I'll leave. Meyer. I'll leave all of my uh, worldly belongings to to Tyrese. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Tyrese, who has been advocating for um, one Chris Piss Paul. God, that was that was really annoying. That was he, he he posted it again on the timeline today. Yeah, can we have an honest conversation? <laughs> I might be there. <laughs> Chris Paul, the veterans minimum, give him to me, please. <laughs> Just somebody who can like dribble and run an offense. Bro, he's gonna be here for like fifty. He's gonna be here for like forty-five games. I, I, I'll take it. I'll take the forty-five <laughs> games at this point. Give me fucking five games. <laughs> give me five oh my games. Gosh. <laughs> Leon Rose. You you have worked wonders on me, but it's time to work one more. <laughs> Bring home your client. He's never going to come here. He wants to stay on the West Coast. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, he's he's been on the his West Coast. Family's there, right? He's been on the West Coast his almost his entire career, basically, right? No, nah, New Orleans is, but like, uh, you know, he 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 moved his family out there once he got traded to the Clippers or whatever. Mm, that makes That's, sense. That was like a big reason why he didn't like he'd never want like. That's why he and not it was not the only reason, but it's it was a reason why he like didn't want to really leave. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. I mean for a guy his age too, he's gonna be close to um retiring soon without a ring. Um, by the way. Um well, I just wanted to leave that in there. But um This is why you gotta love this guy, man. This from Jordan Bubb uh, again, the 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 monster of our our comment section. Uh, Jalen Brunson was asked what the Knicks can do to improve the minutes when he's on the bench as a team. Whether I'm out there or not, we need to be better. This is why you gotta love this guy. He never, he never. These are the moments you use we, not when you're stinking it up. (laughs) Sorry, I'm not. We're not. We're not. We're we. I look. I'm. I'm being honest, dude. Like ever since. I've had OG and Obi introduced to my life. I've got like a newfound level of appreciation for everything that Julius Randle does. Oh hell yeah! Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm like, give doubt. me, give me Big Thirty. <laughs> At least he'll play when he's like yeah, a little yeah. sore. <laughs> oh, oh, my elbow hurts. Oh, oh no! Just, I need a like, little, I, I need hey, a little I, ice pack. Oh no! How, however severe it is or not, Julius Randle's like, is it broken? Uh, no. All right. Put me out there. <laughs> Let's go. I'm good to go. I'm fine. Dude, even last year, do you remember when he like fucked up his ankle again against the uh the Cavs? He tried to like he took the free throws and he like wanted like he was trying to like he kept trying to play. Yeah, and they were like, dude, go into the locker room right now. <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Um, okay, 420 also brings up OG being injury prone most of his career. I mean, this is the pro- this was this was my whole thing when we did the trade. I was like so worried about this because I was just like, 
all right, we're trading for this guy. He's obviously going to be great for us defensively, but like, how many games is he going to play? Because this guy barely played in Toronto, and they loved him over there because they love everybody because they're Toronto fans. But I mean, like, yeah, like, I don't know. Like, how many games is this guy going to play that we're going to like? Is it going to be worth it? I, 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 the only thing I that can be a positive out of this, I guess, is the contract that we signed him to. I dare him. <laughs> I, I dare him to ask for a certain amount of money. I mean, he can. He's got all the leverage, really. I mean, look, his age, his agent is Sam Rose. That's that 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 contract's already been signed. It's sitting in fucking Leon Rose's like, uh, you know, his storage unit. Where he has, uh, you know, his fucking goons go and get her for him. It's it's already signed, sealed, and delivered. I, I, if if I mean, I'll say this: if he doesn't resign, <laughs> well, then, well then, we'll have a lot. We'll have a lot to talk about at that point in time. It'll be, it'll be, it'll hey, it'll help me get get content out. Yes, it will be. Of, it will be great content. Instead of just constantly talking about like, well, what trades could we make? What about this guy? Whatever. What moves on the margin can yeah, we yeah, make? Yeah. What if we sign fucking <laughs> Troy Brown Jr.? What do you guys think about that on a veterans minimum? No, that that won't be the that that we'll, we'll at least get through like uh, July without having to to dig that up. <laughs> we'll have to scrape far for content. Yeah. Um. By the way, this is like I don't even. I have no idea what the question was. This is Jalen Brunson's quote. We just got to be focused. We can't just turn it on once the playoff starts. And I guess the question was, Jalen Brunson speaks on what it takes to make it through the end of the regular season. I'm like, dude, I, I hope he knows. Like, I, I'm. I think they've had it turned on. I, like these guys have been fucking turned on, uh, for the fucking. To play basketball for a long time. I don't know about anything else, but uh, <laughs> Josh Hart, I know, is definitely uh, all about the uh, breast milk. He's he's turned on twenty four hours a day. Um, but like, yeah, dude. I, I'm. I mean, like, it's a good soundbite, but I I'm not one. I'm not questioning their level of focus. I don't. Oh know yeah, is. I mean, they have no choice but to be focused. They're playing like six guys who are productive. On a nightly basis, they have no choice. Yeah, yeah. Like there's no other way for them to be. I mean, they came out the San Antonio game. I think a little not too focused. I mean, th this quote would have been perfect for the first half of the San Antonio game. Um, but yeah, I think for the most part, they've had no choice but to like this has just been who they are at this point. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Yeah, Aaron Bender says there is no bad ending to the season. Disappointing, sure, but very unlikely to be bad. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's disappointing when you when you consider what we were able to see in those glimpses of OG and Randall both being healthy with this team, and that was even before Deuce fully got unlocked. I would say like this was before we saw like Sniper Deuce. Like we saw glimpses of like Sniper Deuce, like the Philly game where um, we absolutely blew the doors off of them um the first time we had og and randall together with them but other than that we really haven't seen like this version of deuce with that version of og and randall so it's just like we it's so disappointing because we haven't been able to see this full coming together of everything we saw it for like a month i mean not with this version of deuce i would say no we didn't but also like I feel like that adds just a little bit more, you know, a little icing, a little sprinkle here and there. Deuce, uh, like the non Brunson men sucked even then. They'll yeah. always suck. Yeah, they'll, they'll always suck. suck. They, they were better before with the trade. Obviously, I think, like, I'm not, I, I don't like to, like, continue to, like, harp on the trade because I just think, like, yeah, we can sit here and be like, well, Quick would have been playing or, you know, whatever, but, like, the trade was worth it because it clearly you opened up a level to this team that they did not have prior to the trade. Um, and that upside is worth the risk, but it is a risk. And the risk is what we're seeing right now in terms of OGs 
various uh, injury issues. Like the Randall thing is a freak. That's a freak accident that like, you know what I mean? Like there's, that was a hit thing. job. Yeah. What you, there's nothing to say about that. Um, but you know, Deuce in terms of his minutes, like he's not, I think all that's changed is that he's playing more with Brunson now. And so like, he's able to play more minutes because Brunson elevates everybody and everything around him, uh, especially on this team. And without him, obviously, we fail. So um, I don't know if anything has changed too much for Deuce other than that. But that's not really a knock on Deuce. He's been awesome for us. And he's been a fucking war. And honestly, he did a fucking great job tonight defensively. I thought he was great tonight defensively. Like, we even yeah. talked about this. Like, I thought he was – SGA, to me, is the only guard in the league that I think has had a better season than Brunson. And Deuce did as good a job on him defensively as I've seen this entire season, he was incredible. He was awesome tonight. <coughs> yeah. Shout out to Deuce. It's good to still have one young guard on this team that, you know, still can do shit, you know? Yes. Cause you know, after the trade, I think a lot of the fans fan base was like, still was, you know, sad if rightfully so. Cause like we just traded all these, you know, young players that we all watched grow up on this team and had some exciting potential. Um, so it's good to still have at least Deuce here that showcases, you know, what it's like having a fun young guard on the team still. Because, you know, I think when you pointed out, you know, there was like an element of joy that was missing when quickly got traded um, away. And I feel like well, I mean, Deuce, yeah. and I feel like Deuce kind of like brings that element of joy a little bit back in I mean, a different you just, way. You need, you need, you need to have young guys on the team to kind of give you like, not just hope as a fan but like also you need those upside bets on your team um and he's playing and he's playing well so you know him and precious like they've helped there's no question about it yeah for sure and also i thought i thought precious had a good game tonight yeah shout out to him you know getting back on the on the wagon a little bit he has had a little bit of a rough stretch um yeah yeah i mean and, and it's fine like that's this is what Raptor fans were talking about, right? Where we're like, is this Jesus? And they're like, <laughs> wait, just wait. It'll be a stretch. You're like, is he fucking the, an is he the antichrist? Like, no, but he, you know, I, I honestly, even during his like kind of a little bit of a downturn he's had recently, I think he's, it's not like he's doing a lot of stupid shit. It's more that he's just like not playing as well. Um, but I thought he had a good game tonight and, you know, it wasn't perfect or anything, but, you know, he, he, he gave again, I got nothing negative to say about the six guys that have been playing the last two months that have given us everything they've got. Because, again, at least they have been playing. Correct. Mm. Um, Walcott Frazier. Given the on-off numbers, I'm convinced Brunson would have received some mentions in media's MVP conversations if the Knicks had won these past two games. I think his, I think even without these past two games, he should have been receiving mentions in the media. I mean, to have a team with a chance at like top two in the East missing three out of their five regular starters for most of the year, that's pretty unheard of. Yeah, and he also outplayed SGA tonight. Just throwing that out there. They had they they literally were throwing a fucking box in one at, at points in this game. They threw a double at him before he even reached, reached half court. Like it's a level of respect you don't you don't see often in the regular but, season, especially. Yeah. This is like crazy. So like Do you think Josh Hart will make a three before the season's over? Um <laughs> No. <laughs> he's done. He's, he's gotten all his makes out. <laughs> yep. That one stretch that we had, I made sure to put him in some parlays during that stretch because I knew there was going to be a time where I couldn't. So, yep. Dude, the fucking Bulls won today? That's crazy. Man. Yeah, they beat the Timberwolves on the Timberwolves home court, by the way. That's wild. Insane. Um, JL, he's giving, he's giving a shout-out to Daquan Jeffries. Who Thibs just randomly threw in there for the inbound pass? That was, I mean, I'm just happy that it didn't 
he was not responsible for anything that happened. That <laughs> because imagine you're Daquan Jeffries and like the one moment you have to be on the court, you like fuck it up, and then you have the whole fan base just like cursing at you on Twitter. <laughs> like that would have been his guy. one moment. Fuck this guy. <laughs> You would have had some idiots like, fuck is Daquan Jeffries? What the fuck is he on the court? (laughs) But there was a quote here in the comments that someone had said that Thibs just put him out there because he's a long wing defensive mind. So here we go. Jordan Bubb, of course. He said, Dom Thibodeau on the Daquan Jeffries minutes to end the first half and on the final possession. Long wing defensive mindset. Cool. Okay. Fine justification to me. Got no problem with that. I mean, he didn't do anything to really hurt us, so. No. Um, Joe Schmo, what a name. When Woj announced OG's elbow was back, oh, I like the way that that's worded, by the way. OG's elbow is back. Like it left or something. <laughs> he said it was like, he said it like the same injury was returned. I am starting to think there was a misdiagnosis to the cause of the inflammation and the bone spurs were incidental. I don't know. I'm not a medical expert. I'm a public school teacher that is underpaid by stupid ass Eric Adams. So there's that. My king. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, maybe maybe Eric Adams is your king. <laughs> I just realized what the hell you just said. I was like, wait, good what? Guy. Good guy, Eric. Adams. <laughs> good guy. Did you see him on the fucking Breakfast Club or Rose this week? Yes. He, got he was getting cooked. And then he had the nerve to, like, sick the police on her. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, he basically was, like, inciting on his interview. He was basically saying, like, you know, like, he tried to make it sound like she was the the inter- the lawyer that um, was interviewing him was, like, belittling a police officer's death. And because of that, like, some police officer Twitter page, um, like, found her page and like started like quote tweeting and stuff like that and like started tagging other police officer pages as well uh yeah uh this is Larry Israel Lou Dort should have fouled out when he obliterated Brunson on defensive rail with like two minutes left ran him over from behind terrible call on Dante and and, and he's the one that fouled um Brunson on the layup too dude Lou Dort was just out there playing just, football yeah he's doing some doing some linebacker activities out there and the refs just let him Cause hey, they're just they're letting guys be physical. Now. Just, we're just letting them play through it. <laughs> this is what, what you guys wanted, right? It's like I, I don't know. I'm sure this is what I wanted. But all right, sure, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, JL says I remember when Rand- Woj said Randall was expected to me- miss weeks, not months, when he first got injured. He can go to hell for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to understand, uh, Woj is generally carrying water for players and their agents so um i will say this i think i really believe this with randall not so much with og i don't believe this at all with og uh but with randall i truly believe that they're like he would have come back sooner if they were in a precarious position um and i think because they haven't been the team has been in a position to be like no just like let's let's really like stretch this out and we want to make sure that you're like where you need to be for the shit that matters. Um, I, I, I've been wrong many times for my life. Um, frequently actually. Uh, but I, I would be really surprised if he doesn't at least get on the floor at some point before the regular season. So we're just trying to ramp up. <coughs> it would be a welcome sight. And that's something I never thought I'd say before. But yes. <laughs> Chris Bernhard says, just like Eric Adams said, you can see anything in New York, like a plane flying into two buildings. He's gonna go down as a special mayor. It's amazing how no one on either side likes the dude. I wanna I really wanna know what prompted him to say that. <laughs> just like like you couldn't think of anything else that's special about New York. <laughs> When you come to New York, yeah, dude. Sometimes you know you might go to work and you fucking see the World Trade Centers collapse, like crumbling. <laughs> okay, all right, thanks, man. Thanks for bringing that back up. What an insane person! 
You were you were in the city then, right? You were living there then. What? Like you were in Brooklyn in nine, during nine eleven, right? Like you were living in Brooklyn. I was barely like barely aware of anything, but yeah, I was alive. Yeah, you were alive. I was like, wait, was I? Yeah, I was. <laughs> So, I was there. I was so there. You know, but then you know my Eric family Adams, moved to Florida like right after. You know what Eric Adams is talking about. <laughs> Dog, it, it, it doesn't make sense how he got elected as the mayor of the city. I mean, you probably voted for him. Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> 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 Matt Gates, that would be the politician. <laughs> yeah, it's Matt Gates. <laughs> Could you be Trump too? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, right after that comment is Hawkeye for twentieth comment. <laughs> Good guy. Hawkeye for twenty nose ball. <laughs> Um, um, I think Nora's comment here is in, is what is in a to what I is a response to what I said about not seeing this full version of Deuce. I mean, yeah, I think Deuce, Deuce we start to see like what Deuce could become in those first couple of OG games, but like not to like this level. I think the volume's just been much more now, and I think that's the product of OG not being here, probably. But um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, maybe. It's true. What the hell? Alex Caruso finished the Bulls' victory with a bloody hand, and then Tory Craig sneakers because he blew out his own. He also sank a career high seven threes and can five I, can steals. We, can I, I? Can we just trade for Caruso? Can I was literally just that? about to say, like, can we do that in the off season? Yeah. <laughs> like, can that be our can big just, move? Yeah. Can we just get this fucking guy on the team and like, and just have like fucking ten, like nine guys who try hard just, on defense, just fucking die on the floor for us? <laughs> Can we just do that? I'm not even joking. I'm like, give up both of our first round picks. Uh, just fucking let's get this guy in here. I'm with it. That guy's gonna be on the court more than OG. So that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see OG on the court with no bloody hands. It's gonna be like, oh, I need bandages. <laughs> I'm bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, <laughs> can we get some gauze? <laughs> <laughs> can I get some Neosporin? <laughs> I'm not, I, I genuinely like, I, it clearly must be like a like. He clearly is injured. It just it's really it's just really frustrating. It's like, frustrating the reporting behind it. It's just yeah. like just come out and say like these guys are right, like they're done, like we're shutting them down or whatever it is. I get they're trying to be like optimistic and they're taking it day by day and whatnot. But like for us as fans, it's very frustrating when we're seeing like other players just like die on the it's, basketball it's, it's, court. It's an information vacuum. So like yes. basically what just happens is that we don't have any. Schwinn, did you freeze? I think Schwinn froze. But yes, what Schwinn was saying is correct about the information vacuum, about us not having all the information. Um, and that's frustrating as fans, because it's just like, you know, we want to know these things, and like, not seeing these players on the court is just that much more annoying. Hopefully things change and hopefully we get some updates but i'm just holding out hope that it's just not going to be the case we're not holding up hope that's the wrong way to phrase that but i'm just assuming the what is that i'm just assuming the the negative at this point like i'm not even just going to be optimistic about it anymore um schwinn has departed for the moment i think he lagged out um but here we go um jordan bub asks do you think if randall comes back in the postseason but og doesn't come back what you're feeling all right schwinn you're back you're talking about the information vacuum 
Yeah, I just that's what it is. Like, it's so weird. Just left to kind of fill in. Like, and there's nothing for us to speculate on. So, unfortunately, like, you just tend to think the worst, right? Uh, I, it's, I, I, I don't doubt that he's hurt. I don't doubt that at all. My honestly, and I'll, I'll be totally transparent. Right? Like, my own, my, my main beef is like, I don't doubt he's hurt. And I don't doubt that, you know, shooting and all that stuff, maybe it, it must be very hard for him with whatever he's doing with his elbow if he can't totally feel it or it feels weird or whatever's going on. But like, man, if you could just give us 15 minutes, you don't even need to shoot. Josh Hart never shoots. If you could just give us 10, 15 minutes of defense and all that stuff, that'd be, it would help a lot. Uh, but. Again, like I, I really tried hard to stay away from the, uh, too much shitting on AD. I don't know what's going to happen, and 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 in, in general, like as we've seen in the past, like uh, when you don't know things, sometimes uh, you might make assumptions, and then you later find out your assumptions were stupid. Kind of like uh, like Kate Middleton, as we saw very recently. Why? Yeah. Public, is she dead? Oh, he has fucking cancer. Okay, but now you feel like an asshole, right? <laughs> so that's like I, I. That's why I've just been trying really hard not to like shut up. But I can't. Like I'm a fan, so at the end of the day, like at some at some points, like I'm just like, come on, dude, like come on, get on the floor, do it for me. <laughs> you owe right. me this. You owe me this. <laughs> You know how many years I've watched this team? <laughs> it's 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 the perfect it's the perfect encapsulation of the Kevin Garnett clip from um Uncut Gems. Oh, I thought we were gonna go with a different Kevin Garnett clip. <laughs> Where did you think I was going with that? <laughs> That's like honestly the funniest quote ever. It's like well, why was that the thing like I get what you're saying. It's probably a better way to say that. <laughs> it's unfortunate Tyrese isn't here. <laughs> Jordan Bob says, do you think if Randall comes back in the postseason, but OG doesn't come back, what your feeling about that would be? I uh, will give you my feelings at the time, but I think I would feel certainly a type of way about that. <laughs> Big 30. Big 30 forever. Uh, Alex says, you guys see Josh, Hart, Josh Hart's comments. I'm assuming these are the ones that we read earlier about um, <clears throat> this potentially just assuming this is the team. And yeah, I mean, I saw it. I don't know what to make of it. Josh Hart is not necessarily the most reliable narrator of all time. Yeah, I mean, Josh Hart is just going to speak his mind too. So it's like, you know, you got to take that as a great, with a grain of salt. Connor Pearson Ward said Eric Adams could have brought up a Mets beating the Yankees type of thing, but no, he went straight to the planes. Eric Adams is a wild boy. A wild man. Um let's see what else we got here. Um Hawkeye 420 says Boyan in a first for Caruso. <laughs> they said you got taken out by Eric Adams. <laughs> <laughs> when you froze out, <laughs> they said your internet turned into OG. Uh, <laughs> Schwinn and his Willem Dafoe era. Do you know how much I sacrificed? <laughs> it's a lot, man. I'm, I'm, I, I watched uh, I watched 82 games of fucking Langston Galloway at point. So. Oh, my God. Uh, there were some fun moments in Langston Galloway's. I like tenure. no Langston. Langston, he's a good man. He's 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 one of the good guys during that miserable era. Uh, <laughs> Israel, I don't, so I don't, I didn't see this play. So if somebody has a link. I'd definitely be interested in seeing it. Rudy Gobert and Alex Caruso. I had a knee injury a couple years ago in the same play and missed a month because someone ran into me into my knee. I missed a month. I hope they look at this because if they don't hold people accountable, I'm going to hold them accountable myself. What the fuck does that mean? He's gonna fight. He's like, he's gonna murder. He's gonna, he's gonna beat up the refs, or he's gonna fucking 
beat up Alex Caruso? <laughs> I think I would take Alex Caruso to fight anyway. Nah, he's like he's he's like one of those crazy defenders that's like so he's like he's definitely like like someone that's gonna like bite someone during a fight. I could see it. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's no <laughs> there's no clip. <laughs> Uh, I watched Ron Baker and Anthony early. I watched David Fisdale get Emmanuel <laughs> Mujeres. Andre Dyer, explain, explain your blackness. <laughs> Isn't that what Josh Hart said to Isaiah Orange? <laughs> Isn't that what he said to him? Yes. So <laughs> explain Hart, your blackness. Yeah, Josh Hart is honestly <laughs> the most ridiculous. Like he is like he is wholesome J.R. Smith. <laughs> He's wholesome, J.R. Smith. I stand by that. Just a hilarious. Like, I'm honestly like he, and I, I like realize this this season because of the start of the season, I like hated Josh Hart during the first two months of the season so much. I was just like, why are you playing like the biggest asshole ever? Uh, but in the last three months, I'm just like, how are you playing 49 minutes a night? How is that happening? Can you explain that? He's incredible, man. Everything he, again, you can shit on him for some of the stuff he does, but I'll never question the guy's effort and commitment. He's again, this entire team, what they're giving us is special. We should appreciate it for what it is. Definitely. Um, yeah. Shout out to Josh Hart, man. Um, Chris Bernhard. I think Tyrese will relate to this if Tyrese is watching somewhere out there um, or any other Mets fan. Tyrese doesn't uh, watch unless he's on. <laughs> I, I watch sometimes when I'm not on, so I thought I just thought that some people, you know. Yeah, but that's like your thing. Like yeah. Tyrese doesn't do that. Tyrese doesn't care. Yeah, Tyrese will just be like, I, I don't <laughs> you don't get it. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't have a guy. In a, I don't have a, a a a bigot in a wheelchair as my as my governor. <laughs> Again, Donny Walsh. <laughs> Donny Walsh, the governor. <laughs> Got her piece of work. If Josh Hart is Jair Smith, does not make Brunson is Iman Shumpert? Can we let's respect Jalen Brunson? <laughs> Schwinn hates Iman Shumper. That was the worst question to ask. This fucking guy wore a sneaker on his head. Like, that's a real thing. He did that in a music video. Wore a fucking sneaker on his head while wearing Carmelo Anthony. Can I just say the dumbest <laughs> thing ever? The, the literally the singularly stupid, the most singularly stupid Shumper thing was that. Do you remember that story he told about like Carmelo a couple years ago where he was like, He's like, oh, you don't get like this guy was just different and like you know whatever. So he's telling the story about it. But he's like, he's like, I was open and he didn't pass me the ball. And I was like, why the fuck did you pass me the ball? And he's like, yo, I practiced that shit. And I'm like, what? What about the story? Do you think is good? Like what? Like <laughs> what? Is, what about? So he practices shots over triple teams, and you're okay with that now because he said that to you, even though you're fucking wide open for three. So he's basically saying he respected the lore. I respect. I res, I I actually believe in myself to make this fadeaway jumper over three defenders more than passing over to your fucking sneaker wearing ass, head ass uh, wide open from three. Iman Shumpert, just a fucking Jesus. J.R. Smith, I got respect for J.R. Smith. Iman Shumpert, fuck that guy. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> hey, Sushar. Sure. Yvonne Shumpert admitted that Mello should never pass. <laughs> <laughs> JL. Tyree's grinding the CP3 tape. <laughs> he definitely is, because he was he was <laughs> Tyree's he was gonna going post to like he's gonna fucking post like Chris Paul synergy numbers tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> He definitely is. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so Jordan Bub, he's bringing up our next couple games. So we have Heat on Tuesday, Bulls on Friday, Bucks on Sunday, 
on the road, Kings at home on Thursday on TNT. What do you think we go? What's our record here? Bucks, it's not in the road. Are we, we're at home against Miami. No, we're on the road against Miami. Uh, we're on at home against Bulls. The Bulls. What are we doing against the Bulls here? Um. God, I wish I had any ability to check where. <laughs> where? <laughs> wait, which game is this? This is at, on Friday, right? Yeah. At Chicago. All right, we're gonna go three and one. Okay. Call on it. And who's the Rand- last? And Randall will be back for the Kings game. That's I'm throwing my hat in the ring. That's my guess. Chris Bernhard says four and zero, win by forty each game. And Josh Hart drinks breast milk after every game, like he's stone cold <laughs> after a mania. Uh, we lose to the Bucks. I could see that. The the Bulls are pretty much locked. But in. They're, we, locked if, in, they're locked in as a as a playing team. I don't think I like think locked so. in their seating too. I think so. I am going. One thing for sure is that Bucks game. If we're down. Versus a Doc Rivers team, I'm definitely going to take Nick's money line, no matter what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I do not care. We could the be down Bulls, 30. The Bulls are 36 and 39. Um, so they've played 75 games. Hawks are 34 and 40, played 74. They're game back in the last column. I don't know what their tiebreaker situation is, but the Bulls are basically locked in as a 9 or 10 seed. Yeah, for the most part. Yep. So they're just playing for. Home court in the nine nine the ten nine, game. Ten. Yeah. Yeah. Um, JL says playing the Bulls three times in the last week is kind of annoying. We are definitely gonna lose one of them to some DeRozan bullshit. Yeah, I mean well, I think we'll 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 steal we'll we'll at least get like a probably a handed win to us against the Celtics though. We play the Celtics again? Yeah, but they don't but they're they have they're literally it's like I think it's like a third like so, it's like the second to last game of the season. Oh yeah, they're going to be playing like it's going to be like a pay and Pritchard and Sam Hauser and Luke. They, they've already the they've game. clinched the they've clinched the top seed right in the in the East. I don't think so, not yet officially. Oh, they have to have. The Bucks have played. They're forty seven and twenty seven. The Celtics are fifty and sixteen. Well, mm, so if the mean, Bucks, even if the Bucks went out, they're fifty five and twenty seven. They they've got the one seed. Um, mm. they're just they're playing to clinch the overall top seed basically at this point. So Thunder are 52 and 22. Nuggets are 52 and 23. Timberwolves are 51 and 23. Um, so like they've got Oh yeah, win. Boston has E, they clinched the Eastern Conference, it says. Yeah. So they basically just need to win like four, three or four more games and they're good to go. Um okay. Yeah, they're definitely gonna be playing like Sam Hauser a bunch of minutes that game and Peyton Pritchard and Luke Cornett. Like that's gonna be that type of nasty type of game. Chris Bernard says, hey, at least Trump gave us the Knicks 2012 hype track. That is actually the track, if you go back and watch the video, where he wore a sneaker in his head. <laughs> really? Yes. I don't remember ever watching the official track. I just think I watched like highlight tapes that just had the track in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Chris Bernard, at this point, the Rangers are my only hope with the Knicks mystical injuries. For God's sake, to do the thing, yeah. Uh, you it, you know that God definitely hates the Knicks. Uh, he gave us a month. He was like, "Yeah, y- you think this is what you could have? <laughs> you could if, be really good if I messed with y'all, <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> so here's what the rest of the year is gonna look like. Everybody's dying. <laughs> Everybody's dying. Deal with it. Uh, car. Connor Pearson Ward says Josh Hart should pull a Kurt Angle and drive a truck of breast milk to the arena. Where would one get a truck of breast milk? <laughs> I feel like if if anybody could do it, it would be Josh Hart. Yeah, Josh Hart would find a way. <laughs> He'd find a way. <laughs> um, Judah Benchar. Who is looking at this with a very positive outlook, and I, I respect it. He says, "No, nah, I think God is giving us all the pain now, so we can win a bunch of chips later." 
You know what? Let's hope so. You know, it could be worse. We could be Brooklyn. Guys, Larry Israel is here. <laughs> and this man was actually, I'm pretty sure, Larry, correct if I'm wrong, was alive when the Knicks won, last won their championship. Do you know how many Knicks fans have been alive since 1973 and have been telling themselves the same fucking thing? <laughs> We're going to do it soon. It's going to happen. I'm... <laughs> I don't know, man. When it happens, it'll happen, but uh, fuck. Who knows? I'm also a Bills fan who famously a very successful team that has won a lot of championships. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yo, this is crazy. <laughs> Yo, what? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, look at this, man. Larry, Larry's giving us real details here. I was six and a half, and I started really watching in 75. There you go. Wow. This man watched Rory Sparrow play for the Knicks. Think about that. Legend. I don't even know who Rory Sparrow is. I have no idea who that is. Exactly. <laughs> Yo, Larry, did you watch the Trent Tucker game? That's what I want to know. Probably did. <laughs> Probably he definitely did. Guys, fucking locked in like we are. <laughs> live, he was there live. Look at that! There wow, that's a fucking OG for you guys. All right, <laughs> JL says Nets Daily was locked in on the '73 finals. <laughs> Hell yeah, he is. He was Dude, that guy's old as dust. <laughs> can I just say that Nets Daily thing the other day? That's like <laughs> honestly one of the best things to ever occur on NBA. <laughs> I uh, honestly like I almost like I'm like I actually have like a newfound respect for the guy. I'm like, dude, you're like fucking 85 and you're shit posting on Twitter like us. Like that's awesome. <laughs> that's fucking great. Like now I know that like you know sometimes you get self conscious you get older. You're like, is this normal? <laughs> now I'm like, it's fucking normal, dude. It's very well. Normal. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's that normal. Nets daily is like far from the thing I would recognize as normal. <laughs> Mister Windrum. That picture of him is hilarious. That guy is really old as dust. Holy shit. <laughs> um, the only reason we this is Chris Burr, the only reason we lost 94 is because of OJ. If I did it, as he said, that's the reason we lost, not John Stark. Was like Bismack Biambo. No, we lost in 94 because uh, I'm not even just. Do you ever want to go wonder why we lost 94? Go Caruso's to, stat line tonight was insane, by the way. I believe he had like seven, what is it, seven steals? 21 points, five rebounds, five assists, five steals, seven threes. Dude, that guy is just like, if he, if we got him, Tibbs would like probably play him 49 minutes a game. He would probably <laughs> immediately discard, like, you know, like in Toy Story. I don't want to play with you anymore. <laughs> He's like, Josh Hardy's like, all right, enough. <laughs> <laughs> this guy can make three sometimes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Larry Israel. My first game was at, was Dr. J at the NASA Coliseum. We won that game. Dude, Dr. J must have been awesome to see live. Wow. Larry Israel, the legend. It's a real OG right there. <laughs> <clears throat> um, all right. Jail asks the great question: Did Doctor J sit out games with an elbow injury? <laughs> he probably sat out games because he had like fucking he had like fucking al alimony shit he had to do. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> isn't didn't he have a isn't it? He has a, like a daughter that he has like a famous daughter that he didn't actually have a relationship with, right? I have no idea. Yeah, it's a tennis player. Alexander Stevenson. Yeah. Ooh. There you go. It, this is why you guys watch the rundown for us to discuss uh, <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Dr. J's familial relationship. Yeah, his off court activities. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yo, shout out to everyone that's been in here, man. Um, you know, watching on Twitter. Make sure you guys are following the page. 
Make sure you guys head up to YouTube. Make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> JL OG needed to play in the 80s. The Coke would have been calling his name. <laughs> you ain't thinking about Francis. You ain't thinking about Bird. A lot of deadbeat dads in that era. <laughs> Can we be real? There's just a lot of deadbeat dads in every era, unfortunately. <laughs> Top five deadbeat dads in the 80s. <laughs> List them. We need, we need the legend of winning uh, video on that. <laughs> Here's what you don't know. <laughs> <coughs> All right. I think this is where we wrap things up. Yeah, we're not even talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> we're not here. Yeah, shout out to everyone that's tuned in. If you're on Twitter, make sure you guys are following us. Make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Um, we'll be back on Tuesday after the Heat game. Hopefully, the Knicks win that game, get us back on track, get us, you know, back in the win column. Um, yeah, check out all the links in the description. We got links to the site, merch, Patreon, and Twitter. Um, if you're watching on Twitter, you're already there, so follow us there. Um, and yeah, we'll catch you guys on Tuesday. Everyone, enjoy your Monday. Enjoy some women's basketball, guys. Tune into that. Peace.